Hey folks, welcome back to the Portable Gamer, welcome back to European Truck Simulator 2, and welcome back to Bitola. Bitola? Bitola. This is in North Macedonia. Hey, look what I found. Check it out. The Antos, the Mercedes Antos updated to 1.35. Patched up. I'm so happy. I really, really am. I love this truck. I do. Let's do this. Yeah, let's do it. Thanks, voice navigation guy. So I just put a job in, and we gotta go pick it up. Get some wipers on here, wipers on there. Brakes off, brakes on. Brakes off. So let's go pick this job up, we'll get rolling, and I'll tell you what's going on. I think it's gonna take us two trips to deliver this. It is over a thousand kilometers. <laughs> Let me tell you a funny story about getting out of this town. Oh, it's a hoot. Let me tell you about this truck first. That's a little bit more uplifting. It's a little bit more positive. So this truck, I first saw this truck in another YouTuber's video. Oh, it's got to be a couple of years ago now. Maybe even a few years ago. And I just, I love it. It's like a little mule of a truck. It's fantastic. It's a nice mod. It's based on, I guess, the, the new Actros, maybe? I don't know. I don't know. But it's a nice mod. And apparently it's been handed off. There's a new modder handling it now. I don't know. I know it skips. Sometimes it does not get patched up. I know sometimes it gets patched up really late. <laughs> right? Like the game patches up and then it's several months later. And I talked about this in that ATS video. What do you do at that point? What do you do? Do you just leave a slot in your roster and hope that it gets patched up? Do you, you know, what do you do? And... My solution is when the game replaces a missing mod truck with a generic base game truck, I just sell it. And maybe later we'll put another one in there. You know, if it gets replaced, great. If it doesn't, what can you do? Uh, the Pendragon Volvo, I believe, has been... I I'm reluctant to say abandoned. But it seems to be no, no longer a thing. Holy smokes, it's bumpy right there. Okay. Seems to be not a thing. Now, uh, something else I can tell you about this truck. And I do love it. I mean, as I'm telling you this, I'm not, like... We are finished. I'm not talking smack on the truck. I love it. It's a great mod. Well, how about, how about we just say, I love it. So, uh, we want to take wooden beams. Do we want to, uh, do we even want to mess with this? Sure, why not? What are our choices? Oh, fantastic. Oh, that's there's so many trailers right now. I don't want to. I don't want to. I'm afraid of all those. Let's just take this one. I don't want to start scrolling through all those and have the audio desynchronize. Right, wooden beams. We're taking them to where? Somewhere. What's his name again? It's uh, over there. Okay. All right. So, what I can tell you about this truck, if you do want to want to use this truck. I have to have it above everything. Everything. The only thing that it has a higher priority than this truck in my mods right now is Pro Mods. But everything else. I've got all the drivetrain revisions. And those bring in a lot of new engines, obviously new sounds. All kinds of cool stuff. It's got to be above all those. Uh, all my parts, lights, everything. It's got to be like... This has to be your number one mod. And... You know, when I say that, hang on, I just realized we got our, we got our brights on in the yard. That's not cool. Moment. Did we, uh, no, we got it. Right. So we get this hooked up. That looks appropriate. I think that looks fantastic. Do we have our lights on? That's what we wanted. That's what we wanted. Beautiful. Here we go. So I say all the time, it's got to be incredibly difficult to make a mod. I could not imagine. I couldn't imagine. I mean, I, I'll put some lights on a tractor. I'll, I'll, I make skins. Whatever. That's not modding. Modding is like, that's, that's a whole nother level. It's crazy. I couldn't imagine how difficult it is to do that. And so, I mean, well, and I was talking about this in that ATS video quite a bit. As gamers... You know, you're reluctant to say, like, hey, man, your mod needs some work, buddy. Because they made it for free in their spare time. It's a hobby. 
it, and they didn't they didn't sell it to us they gave it to us but this mod is uh, as much as I love it it can be uh, challenging how's that it can be a little tricky so uh, yeah it is available that is I'm finding good gear here make sure there's no traffic there's some traffic and once we get rolling here I will tell you why we're driving at night what's going on here good sir keep it moving buddy so I started this video about 40 minutes ago and we made it all the way up to a border a border frontier crossing checkpoint guardhouse yeah and uh, so there were two lanes it split it looked like on my little sat nav it looked like I was supposed to take the first right but then I don't know something about it, it just looked like maybe a static area you know just a scenery area so I went to the next one and got up to the barricade. I was in a string of cars. I, was, I realized I was in the cars only lane. I got up to the string of cars, got up to the barricade, and it would not open for a truck. I couldn't back up. There was traffic behind me. I couldn't go forward. I was stuck, and I had to dump the cargo, fast travel to concentrating fast travel to that service area back in Batola it was a scene a proper scene I tell you and the thing that was so frustrating about it was that to me is cute that's a cute thing to do for whoever made this area of ProMods that's adorable because it's a reasonable mistake to make the, the minimap is not super accurate the signage is not always super visible it's a reasonable mistake to make that you would end up in the wrong lane at a border crossing in a truck simulator. And the fact that you are now permanently trapped there and you have to dump your cargo, that to me is, that's cute. That's something that a map maker can giggle about. Haha, <laughs> look what I did. And that sort of stuff just, oh man. It just makes me crazy because it's not, uh, to me, that's not gaming. You know, to me, that's like, hey, guess what? What? That's what. <laughs> well, I mean, come on, man. Somebody says, guess what? It's perfectly reasonable that you would say what? That's not, like, I, I don't know that I'm really, I don't know that I'm really like the victim here. So that sort of thing just, I, I don't, I wouldn't say that it has no place in gaming. That's, that's too strong a word for it. But when mod makers do things like that, uh, it's, it, it really turns me off to their work. I'm not saying I'm turned off to pro mods. I'm still a big fan, but come on. It's like the, uh, the couple versions of pro mods ago, the speed traps in Poland. You crest the hill, you get a ticket. Right? There would, there would be a change in speed limit and a uh, traffic camera at the crest of a hill. It was impossible to anticipate. I guess you could memorize it, but it was impossible to... It wasn't skill-based, unless memorizing the speed traps in Poland is a skill, I suppose it could be. But you see what I'm getting at. There's no way to defeat it. There's no way to win. It's just something you have to suffer through. And it, again, it, it strikes me as something that a, that a map maker or whoever built this area of ProMods uh, could be amused by, you know? Well, I'm not amused. I'm on to you, Macedonian map builder. Right, so lost about a half hour, and now it's always tricky because it's like, well, do I say the same stuff I said before, pretend I'm saying it for the first time, that feels kind of hokey, or do I try to come up with another 30 minutes of new witty banter, which is not, ah, it's not as easy as you might think. I don't know how easy you think it is, but it, uh, it's not easy, <laughs> believe it or not, it's not easy. Sitting in a room by yourself playing video games talking into a can yeah it's moment concentrating it is not the easiest thing in the world it's not hard it's not like I'm not digging for coal here I'm not looking for sympathy I mean it that way but it's uh yeah it's it's something else man this whole YouTube thing right so uh well well I mean well let's talk about the gaming week I saw another patch for spin tires came out this is 1.3.6 and 
I did a, a quick little throwaway video for it yesterday. I hope you like that. Just to kind of keep you aware of what's going on with it. Concentrating. Don't hit the bus. And, you know, I saw something really interesting in the news on the, the on Steam, on the Spin Tires, the original game news feed. I saw a comment, like, not a comment, but like a post from them. A news post, press release, whatever, that was like, yeah, some, uh, some something Russian person has gotten us they filed a some kind of copyright thing through Valve. I don't know, but as it stands right now, like you can't buy spin tires if you don't already own it. Something, but there's some high drama going on there. I really feel like there was there was a an NDA, there was a non compete, there was a there was some kind of an embargo. Hang on, let me slow down a little bit here. There was some kind of an embargo, and the original developers couldn't or didn't work on the game and now that that embargo is lifted they're hopping back in there and i guess the something something i don't even know all the players in this little drama but my goodness it's a video game man i guess uh i guess there's drama in, in development world as well although i mean if you think about it like somewhere today in the world there's eight billion people on the planet somewhere today in the world some fool got iced for like the change in his pocket you know Somebody got mugged, it went wrong, and they're dead. And all the all the person that killed them, all they wanted was just the money in their pocket. What do you got? $23. All right, you're dead over $23. I'm going to prison over $23. So people do crazy stuff for really small amounts of money. And when you get into bigger amounts of money, like something like developing and selling a video game, you know what I'm saying? People are... People lose their sense of humor when money is involved. They take that sort of thing very seriously. So, who knows what's going on. Oh, and then, of course, you got the creative aspect of it. You know, you create something, make something beautiful, and you think somebody's taking it away from you, or you got this going on, you got that going on. So, that's what's going on there. Um, oh, I forgot to tell you while we're driving at night. Well, no, I guess I did. I guess I did, because that first video that I recorded went like totally south at the last second and uh, I went back to Batola to start again looked for a job didn't see one slept looked for a job didn't see one slept wouldn't let me sleep anymore couldn't find a job so that's why we're taking this long job I wanted to take something up near Austria but not quite this far in one trip but so it goes the sun will be coming up shortly maybe oh yeah it's it's about 2.30. Sun will be up in another five minutes or so. You know what? I'm staying behind this truck after what just happened. I'm a little, uh, I'm a little miffed. So we'll stop right here. Let's find a good gear. Here. Beautiful. So, uh, I told you about the truck that we're in. I told you why we're driving at night. Uh, I told you about spin tires. What else is going on? What else is going on? You know, I've been... I've really been putting a lot of thought into, um, well, first off, that YouTuber that did the F1 2019 review and asked, you know, who is this game for? It's really got me thinking about the fun aspect of gaming. Because how I, how I came up in gaming, if we turn our wipers off here, yeah, I sure can, beautiful. How I came up in gaming was, there really wasn't a ton of what I think of as solo gaming, and there was certainly no, well, no, I take that back. There was some online gaming, but it was in its it was in its infancy. It was it was not like what it is now with twenty five thousand people in a lobby, not like that at all. So for the most part, gaming was kind of a social experience, or maybe kind of a, an online experience or sometimes a solitary experience but not nearly as much as it was at least for me and maybe it was different for you the way you came up gaming but for me it was like you get together on Friday night at your buddy's house your buddy that had all three consoles because there's always one of them there's one of those in every crowd right like three consoles and a 55 inch TV yeah let's go to your house and what we would do is we would pass the controller around for something like a race game. Race game, not sim. Pass the controller around, see if we turn the best lap time, right?
Kombat, or if it was a fighting game in Mortal Kombat or something, Street Fighter. And you just, you know, you drink a beer and you, and you game with your buddies and you have a good time. And it was fun. And it was kind of silly. And I think about the way that we played those racing, ga racing games. And to be fair, they're really, the race line really didn't matter. Because the physics was so, in, in hindsight, you know, looking back at it, the physics was comical. There was no physics at all. It was just, uh, I don't know what it was. But it was fun. It really was. And so, you know, you're trying to turn the better lap time, but it's more or less like how good you are at gaming the game versus how good you are at turning a proper lap time. Because the idea of turning a proper lap time in a race sim with a gamepad without hundreds and hundreds of laps of practice, it's like, it's just not, it's not a thing. It's not done. The race sims that I play now are so hard that in some ways they're not fun. And they can be extremely frustrating. Wow. Yeah, they can be. So that got me thinking about, you know, eSport, I think, is going to drive gaming in the coming years. And I think eSport, like like real sport, when we want... Well, no, no, I'm not comfortable saying that eSport is real sport. Not yet. Not yet. But eSport... The thing about it is, it is uh, it is similar to real sport in that when we're watching esport, we want to see people doing things that we can't do. We want to see like the absolute best of the best. We want to be amazed. And I am um, no, I'll trust this one. I see the I see the little green beacon box over there. Although, if there's no video on oh breaks, if there's no video on Monday. No ETS video? It's because something went wrong later on in this one. Although, if something goes wrong later on in this one and I don't post it, you won't hear me saying there's no video. Oh, that's ironic. Or something. Anyway, when we're watching eSport, we want to be impressed. Just like when we're watching real sport. We don't want to watch, you know, a bunch of accountants. From, you know what I mean? We don't want to watch a bunch of accountants play football. Or baseball, or soccer, whatever. We want to see like the best of the best. And we want to see the same thing in esport. The difference is, I'm never going to play in the NFL. But I can see somebody play a game online, and I can buy that game, and I can try to beat their time on their settings. All right? And now we're, in some cases, trying to do the impossible. And that can be extremely frustrating. <laughs> Because there, there are certain things, you know, I've spent enough time in iRacing, I'm comfortable admitting, I'm at peace with the fact that there are, there are certain things that I cannot do with a race sim. I just can't. I wish I could. I want to. And maybe with practice I can get closer. But it is extremely unlikely. Is this the border? Yeah. Okay. Here we go. This is... <laughs> All right. So there is, you see a sign up above, trucks and cars. This says trucks over here. I wasn't 100% convinced. And so I did not take this exit. Uh, you know what? Oh, that's a bunch of bull. There's a truck over there right now. Oh, man. Game. I ended up over there on the right, and the gate would not open for me. It simply would not. I was stuck. I was trapped. And I couldn't back up. I had to dump the cargo. We've got, I think we're sitting on like 1.7 million. I'm not worried about money, but it was the wasted time and plus that whole cute thing. I'm not a fan of the cute. Right, so we'll stop right up here. Maybe right up here. Maybe right up here. <laughs> right there. Checking my documents. I'm just waiting here. Probably got the dog sniffing around. Making sure my wood is legit. Take your time. There we go. Everything is in order. You bet it is. So iRacing has a, a fantastic system of putting you in competition with people that are at about your level. But I've been in practice sessions. 
I'm like a 2,000 I rating. I've been in practice sessions with like 7,000, right? That somehow, I mean, we're not going to race. It's going to make a split, and I won't be racing that person. Jesus. Okay. All right. But I will be practicing with them, and it's hilarious because their their time, their lap time is like four seconds off of the the number two time, and that driver is like a four thousand I rating, and I might be in a race with them, so I can't catch them, but they can't catch that other person, and I know in all likelihood I never will catch that other person. I could spend hundreds, thousands of hours. Practicing and eye racing, I will simply never be that fast. Some of it is just genetics. Some people have better reflexes and a better. Uh, they just they're aliens. They they are just faster driving. A real race car, sim race car, doesn't matter. They're just faster. And then on top of that, there's also the equipment factor. You know, my wheel and pedals are not super accurate. I'm not in a proper race rig. Everything's not bolted down. I get a little bit of movement which makes me reluctant to really get on the brakes as hard as I would like to because I don't want my pedals to go flying. You know, they are secured, but they're not bolted to a race rig. So all those things come together and it's like, no, I won't get there. And yet, when you see that number, that what, what else is there to try for but that number? And I'm also one of those people that once I've done something, it's very difficult for me to do anything less than that. So if I creep my AI up, right, like in the F1 franchise, I think when I started, I was at like 50. I'm at 90 now. I've done a couple races at 100%. The idea of going back to 70 so I can have more fun, sir? Sir? All right. The idea of going back to 70 so I can have more fun, it's like, it's just not going to happen, you know? And even though staying at the AI settings that I'm at is very frustrating. I'm going to stay at them. And that's what we do as gamers. You know, that's what we do. So that cat was asking in a specific context, like, who is this game for? But I'm beginning to ask in a broader context, where is gaming going? And is it, is it getting to the point where, you know, when somebody's doing something at that high a level in the real world, I don't think they're enjoying themselves. You know, I don't know that... Like, Andrew Luck re retired yesterday evening. American football player retired. Kind of suddenly, he's only played for seven seasons. He was, you know, he was going to be great. He was Hall of Fame. And he, he's just been plagued by injuries. And he said yesterday, my life has become injury, rehab pain, injury, rehab pain. And I don't enjoy playing the game anymore. And I think, how could you? You know, at that point, you're just suffering for 25 million a year. And I know there are plenty of people that suffer for a lot less than that. But we don't pretend that they're having fun. You know, nobody thinks that a coal miner is having fun. They're just working for a living. And when we look at a game, whether it's a real game, like, like American football, or a video game, or, or whatever, I think it's just assumed that the, that the person playing that game is having fun. You're playing a game, you must be having fun. Well, no, not necessarily. Not in real life, very often not the case. And I'm wondering if video gaming is not getting to the same place where these games are so difficult now that they're sort of not fun. They're satisfying, you know? But I'm, I'm curious. I'm really curious what direction it's going in. I mean, even this game, I've got the brake intensity turned way down. Got the trailer stability turned way down. Try to play as realistically as possible. So, you know, it it's uh Yeah. I'm curious. I'm curious, we'll see where it all ends up. I'm definitely curious what gaming is gonna look like in the next few years. I think as the as the cards continue to evolve and as developers continue to sort of push what cards can do, I think gaming is it's it's already close enough to photorealistic but I think it's just gonna well it's gonna make the same changes that have occurred in the past few years when we look at 
look back at a game like uh, I'm, I'm playing uh, Assassin's Creed Unity right now. Looking back at that, it's only a few years old. And it, it doesn't look dated, but uh, Odyssey looks so much better. And it's just a couple years more recent. So that is, I think, the, the, the inevitable. You know, these games that we love so much, we're going to look back on them in a few years and, and wonder how we could even tolerate it. That's the visual part of it, and then you throw in the AI part of it. Which isn't really AI. We know that. Hang on. Hang on. Whoa. Whoa. Easy player. Had to swing it a little bit wide there. Uh, where are we at? We're at 26 minutes. You want to pull into this gas station and call it? I haven't done a lot of two-part videos lately, but we're, we're doing a two-part ATS based on some shenanigans and deviltry. Well, it's too late. We're going straight. We'll go another uh, five minutes or so. We'll pull over. We'll get stopped somewhere. I think this is about halfway. We'll pull over. We'll get stopped somewhere. And we'll pick it up next week and take this the rest of the way into... Where did we say we're going? Slovakia? Slovenia? Somewhere. We'll get this the rest of the way in. We'll continue making our way west. I believe at that point, we should be... I think we can make it from... Because that's... We're dropping off just east of Austria. Pretty sure we can make it from Austria to France in one, one trip. I would hope that we could. So we'll keep on making our way west. And... Uh, yeah, I don't know about going back down into Spain. I, I like Spain, but it just kills my frame rate, and it's so tight down there. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. Got a little, little something going on here. Little highway construction. Beautiful. Carefully. Carefully. Right there. Jeez. Here, we got this. We got this beautiful. Right through there. Okay, so, there we go. Back to 90. 90. Hell yeah. So we will, uh, in fact, I think I see a stop right up there. Yeah, we'll pull right up there and stop. We'll continue next week, and then we'll, uh, we'll make our way back to Reigns and decide what we want to do next. I'll probably make a couple more trips in this Antos and then bring that Volvo back into play because we only did the one trip in it. Uh, I'm not really seeing any services here. Time? 27 minutes. Whoa. Okay. We'll roll one more exit. Look for another gas station. And how are we doing on fuel? Oh, we're fine on fuel. Beautiful. So yeah, man. That's, uh, that's what's going on. It's just been... Oh, what is this? Oh, that's for cars. Cars, not trucks. I just saw the speed limit go to 130. Hell yeah. Okay. Lock in the cruise control. And away we go. And I think, yeah, I mean, we can we can check here. Yeah, we've got at least another half hour of real time to finish this job. And that would put us at a minimum of an hour for the video. I'm trying not to do one hour videos anymore. I used to do them. Try not to do them anymore. So we'll roll just a bit more. Uh -huh. What are we seeing up here? No, just a road sign. Hang on. For him. We should have stopped at that gas station. We don't need fuel. Just wondering if we. I mean, we can just stop on the road and I'll pick it up rolling, but I'd rather pull over somewhere and stop proper. Proper. Through here. There we go. Looks like a uh, toll booth. But I see some services up here as well. Okay. So I'm not going to sleep here. I'm just going to go through this. Uh, toll booth and pull over into the sleep area. And we'll call it. 
In fact, you know what? I'm not even going to pull over there. I'm going to pull over right here and not go through here. Because I'm not even sure where it is on the other side. However, right back here and right here and then right here. Beautiful. Zoom in a little bit. There's your screenshot. Folks, thanks for stopping back to check out the Portable Gamer. Thanks for joining us for another episode of European Truck Simulator 2. We'll see you next time. Take care now.